Okay, this water buffalo is from Instagram by user WillBL, W-I-L-L-B-L, uh, Tsavo East National Park. Uh, really beautiful photo. So let's let's make him into a cool character design. I'll try to make him cute. These things are, are, are pretty dangerous in real life. But um we're gonna we're gonna give him some personality. So so the first thing I usually do is just just sort of think about let me use a, a yellow. I'll just use a yellow um color here so you can see sort of the breakdown sort of the breakdown of what we'll do with this guy. So when I think of characters, I think of the simple shapes. So you have the shape of his head pretty much like this. Then you have his ears. So these are the shapes that we want to try to bring over. And these are the shapes you should try to look for in your character design. And everything else will sort of fall into relation to all of these big shapes. For example, the horns. See, the horns are going to be like this. And see how they have a relation? They're not too far from the ear. You can use all this when you're drawing. So they come up, they sort of come to the, close to this corner, and then they come around like this. So just use a lot of these things. His, his, his nose sort of looks like a heart. So that's a great shape that you can sort of, you can sort of um, just use to get a basis of the shapes. Big round body. And then the art, the uh, the legs come off like this, and of course, then later on you can get sort of into this detail. You know how they have uh, the different anatomical things, like that. But for now, we're just going to stick to just stick to shapes and curves, just to make it simple. So that's how I that's how I think about um, things that I'm drawing. I really think about everything uh, in a very watered down way at first. Okay, good. I was hoping I didn't draw directly on the image, which I do often because I can be a dum dum. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my regular uh, Sketch Master Two we'll use for this, and it's just a thicker brush. And what the thick brush does is it forces me to stay loose. Okay, so first we have that very boxy head. Oops. So let's start with that. So I keep it very simple. And as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of sketching bigger than the artwork, uh, than the photo. But that's because I can just shrink it. It's on its own layer, so I can shrink it uh, when I need to do the bigger sections. Okay, so that's a pretty good square shape. Fairly simple. So now the ears, they're almost about halfway into the head, and they just kind of trail off like that. So we'll do the other one the same way we did. Let's see, and they sort of go down like this. They sort of go down, so I'm just matching. I'm just matching this, and then they sort of come up into the head. And they have their little. Okay, so now we have the ears there, um, and my ears are a little big, and I might keep them like that. You know, sometimes I sort of like to make ears big and make different 
um, sections bigger than they would be. But uh, you can always just go back and change it. It's just a sketch. So if you needed to, you can just use the ribbon tool, freehand. And, you know, if you decide you want something bigger or smaller, then you can just change it that way. And just keep it very simple and very, very easy. All right, so, so I'm going to make the center line going down the center of his face. And he has that heart nose, so... It's sort of a heart, but it's a little wider. So for now, I'm just going to use that. Just to kind of use up that real estate. And his eyes, pretty much, let's see, they would be about here. And we may want to put his eyes closer together, just to make him look more, more character -y. But just for now, I have really light areas where, where his eyes are. Okay, so now for these very cool horns, let me make this a little smaller. So for the horns, I want to make sure that I really have a nice flow to what I'm drawing. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm just going to follow that shape and it goes down to his ear. And you have that nice curl there. And here I'm just building out this this curve you know I just want to make it as you can see it comes out a little bit from the ear so you just want to make sure it gets out there and I keep going over my sketch until I have it where I like it so I'm zooming in just to see the anatomy of these ears so it looks like his neck sort of comes out or his ear sort of comes out from his face, so I'm just going to adjust this and just sort of make that little piece that comes out from, from his head. And this is a little lower, mine is a, mine is a little high, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to make the top of his head a little higher. So I make the top of his head a little higher, and that matches a little closer to what we have here. And also what's important is this section here. As you can see, it's sort of is flat underneath, so that's, a, that's an important aspect. So I'm just going to add this line here. Just so, I, just so I have that flatness. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. So I'm, I'm just going to erase the, the other headline, just so I don't get confused. And now I'm going to do the, the, the same thing with the other side. Now I'm not, I don't even have to really look at this horn too much. I'm just going to look at my own sketch. And I'm just going to make sure that it's even. So I'm going to make my sketch a little smaller. That way I just have more room. And another trick you can use is you can go to the wrench here and you can go to... what do I need? What do I need? Canvas reference and let me upload a new image import so I'm going to import this in our reference window so now I can just sort of drag it make it bigger so I just have whatever section we're working on 
I just started using the reference tool recently, so, but it's very useful. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the right layer, which I need to do often because a lot of time I hate when I start drawing on the wrong layer. It's the worst. So just as I did with the other horn, I'm just going to build it out. Make sure it has that nice shape to it. Now I'm going to do that line. Same line. Just so I just so I remember that it's there. Okay, so these shapes are looking pretty good. So if you want to be really technical, uh, one thing you can do is you can take your sketch and you can flip it horizontal. And this will actually show you uh, what's not even. So you can see it's, it's not very even at all. So what I like to do is I like to just take liquify. And if you don't new, you don't use liquify too much, uh, it's in adjustments. So you just hit the magic wand here in adjustments and then go to liquify. Um, I'll make the size fairly big. And I'll just sort of even this out. See, what I'm doing is I'm just pulling. And for the liquify brush is... The shape is sort of like an airbrush. So I can make it smaller and just do little sections. But if you make it bigger, it covers just more, more of a whole area. So what I essentially want is just for this to look even. So I'm, I'm pushing and pulling certain, certain parts. So that if I flip it back and forth, one side isn't leaning, or one side isn't bigger or smaller. Uh, now, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does affect how something looks. Even if you don't really notice it at first, it does affect how something looks. And it's like, it's things like this that really set apart a professional looking work versus, you know, a more amateur sketch. And obviously this trick anyone can do. You don't have to be a professional to sort of do this trick. So, you know, it's these little things that can really elevate your work if you're just thinking about them. So I think that that's, that's a lot more... Also what's important is to look at your work straight on. So hopefully my face doesn't get too much in camera. But you want to look at everything straight on. So I'm leaning over my canvas right now, and I'm looking straight down at it. Because normally, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning off to this. I'm right-handed. So my right hand is here. My head is in this area. So I'm seeing it from an angle. So what's really important is to sometimes just look directly down onto what you're drawing. Because it will look drastically different. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. So let's see if I flip it back. It's not bad. There's still a little bit more I want to adjust um, once I flip it back. But for the most part, I think it's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this and just use our our bigger image. So I'm going to make this sketch smaller because the head is looking pretty good. So now we have that, that huge body. So, so we have a really big neck here. So let's start out with that. It sort of comes off here and then goes up sort of in the middle of both ears. So, so I'll just do really light 
that shape just to have it. And make his big round body here. That might be a little bit too round. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. That, it, it might also be because I made his ears so big. But, but that's alright. So I'm going to put a line here just to kind of get the space to where his, his legs are. So he has one leg that's starting about here, one leg that's starting about here. So now we'll get into those other shapes that we did before. And a lot of times I use this negative space. See, this is all negative space here, which can help you when you're trying to space out uh, what you're doing. So I'm gonna make that negative space, which would be about that wide. I'll do a simple leg here. Now for the other leg, I'll start with this big section here, just to give me a basis, and then I'll just make his other leg, which is a little bit behind his, a little bit behind this one. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to make his whole body a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to select, whoops kind of went over his face there. So I'm just going to select his body. I'll just shrink it a little bit until it looks about where I want it to be. Okay, so that looks a bit that looks a bit better. So now I'm just going to sort of shape out this section. So it's not it's not a complete circle. It's more like a sort of a shape like that. So I'm just going to sort of shape that out. His little butt area. And these are also also quite a bit bigger. So now I'm just sort of following these these uh these lines that he has. And also I'm seeing that there's a lot of space between his ear and his leg. And I might not have enough space there. So all I'm going to do is take my sketch, go around the bottom, and just pull it down. And these adjustments I make, I'm constantly making when I'm doing, uh, when I'm doing sketches. So constantly just keep looking and keep making adjustments until you get the shapes that you need. And now I'm just following all these curves. I'm just following them. And as you can see, he's actually getting quite a bit bigger, so I might have to make the body smaller again. Excuse me. Or I can make the head bigger, actually. Let's try that. So let's make his head a little bit bigger and see what it looks like. And another trick that you can do is it looks like his head is a bit wider. So you can go to your selection tool, go to freeform, and I'm just going to widen out. I'm just going to widen out my sketch. 
So then I'm going to make that neck area again, make it nice and thick. And I'm going to give them a new leg. Sometimes it's easier to just redraw things rather than to uh, try to fix up, you know, some, some sketchy lines. So this is looking pretty good. So I'm just going back to this regular shape here. And let's sort of lightly put in his back leg. So I'm following these shapes here. I'll just put in a circle for his knee area, just so I know it's there. And I'll do that shape like we did before. This comes out. I can make that leg a little smaller. As you can see, I tend to draw a lot of my sketches uh, fairly big, but that's the great thing about uh, the sketch phases. You can just you can just adjust everything as you need. Even even the the placement. Sometimes the placement can be a little off. So just keep adjusting until it looks right. Okay, so for this leg, this comes out, I'll make the circle where the, the little knee knuckle is. And I'll just make his little foot here. Except for that one little, that leg looks a little weird, oops. So, and as you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of trial and error. It's not easy to sketch things and have them look, look good, especially on a rough sketch. It really takes a lot of work and a lot of practice uh, to really get it right. Okay, so, so far I like what I'm seeing. I think that, I think that his head could be a little bit bigger. So this face, I sort of have the body um, sort of worked out more than before. And remember, this is just a rough sketch, so. So now I'm in free form. And I'm still working on his head because I want it to fit with the body. So that's a good size. That looks like a pretty good size. And, I, and again, I'm matching up the, how, how long he is, like how long his torso is before it gets to the legs. So I'm actually gonna, oops. I'm going to bring the legs down a little bit. Okay. And I really want to stick to these, uh, these shapes here. I really want to stick to have our sketch nice and flowy. So what I'm doing now is I'm just re I'm just sort of making all the lines simplified. Okay, so I think that looks I think it's a good it's a pretty good place to to start. So now let's look at some other little details like his toes. So I'm just gonna start with the line in between the toes. 
And for the toes, I'm just going to use circles because that's the most... That's the easiest to sort of shape. And all I'm doing is the toe line is usually on the center of whatever direction his foot is. So I'm just using that center line to sort of make the make the hooves. The hooves all sort of have like a round, round shape. And they round out this little knee area. Okay, it's not bad. So once I'm here, now I'm looking at uh, the shapes again. I'm looking at uh, if if any of his legs look like a weak link like he has a very strong leg here there's a very big shape big muscles and mine looks like a very weak link so what I'm going to use again is liquefy and I'm just going to pull that out and really give him a strong leg to stand on I'll just erase some of this Just so I can sort of see what I'm working with. So there's a his body here, and then he has a really strong. He's a really strong leg. And then they have that little knuckle there, that knee knuckle. So I'm going to represent that in the circle. And I want them to be f around the same size because these are his two front legs. So they would be around the same size. And again, he has very strong legs, but I want to make sure it's up high enough. long give him his uh, his very strong neck again and then that center line that goes down in the middle so I'm working out all of these things um, as I go along and it's, it's not always going to look right okay so so as you can see this leg is coming out a little bit further so I'm going to make that a little bit more pronounced by using liquify again I'm just sort of stretching that out. I love the liquify tool. If you hadn't figured that out yet. So now let's look at his back leg, which is there's a lot of negative space here and I don't have a lot here. So that tells me that I need to bring this whole section out. Because I really, it's really important the way that they're standing and the way that their weight is distributed. So if it doesn't match up with the photo, like the, the reason everything is happening in the photo is because that, that's what works. So I'm going to bring this out a little bit. And also, there's more space towards the bottom, so I need to widen... I'm going to use liquify again. I'm just going to sort of widen out that stance. And he also has a very skinny leg there, so my sketch is a little big. So I'm just going to make
So I'm sort of making the lines a little bit heavier because now that we have it, everything in the, in the right places, then I, I, I start to feel more comfortable with sort of, you know, make, making things a little, making things a little stronger. But it's important to get the shapes and get everything um, in the proper positions. So I feel like his, I feel like his little butt can like come out a little bit more. So again, I'm going to use liquify and I'm just going to pull that out because I really want him to have that full shape. Okay. So now what I'm noticing is it looks like his, his head is a little high uh, because their heads don't really come up that high from their, their body. So I think I do need to bring his head down a little bit more, but I like the size, but I'm just going to bring the head down. So I think somewhere like there is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase. I'm going to erase this, but I'm going to use that as my guide for the ears. So now when I select the head, I can bring it down and use that as a guide. And I'm also going to make his ears smaller. And see, this is this is the hard stuff that you don't really see on Instagram or on social media. Like you don't see the the hard parts of of this kind of stuff. And I, and I think that's that's where a lot of people kind of get into trouble with the whole uh, tracing debate and things like that. Because you know, I mean, I could just trace his outline, and then I wouldn't have to work and get all this together. I wouldn't have to to um, go through this part of the process, but uh, this part of the process is actually what changes the, the artwork. Okay, so it's also important to just take a look at your sketch. Um, and sometimes I'm, I'm a bit quiet because I literally just sit back and take a look at what I've done, take a look at what matches with a reference and what doesn't. You know, and then slowly just sort of add, you know, a little bit more, more details, more like shapes that are closer to, you know, this essentially I want this to go through that horn, so. Just sort of shaping everything out. You can put a little bit of shapes from, from the ears. So the ears are kind of funny. So let's see. Looks like they, they sort of do something like that. They sort of come around. So I'm not putting all of this detail in. I'm just taking this part of the ear. Let me use a different color. So I'm just taking this part of the ear, I'm use a different brush. And this is what I'm doing with the ears. This is what I, I normally do. So right now I have this and I have this. So I'm using this shape to sort of make that. And then I'm just making a line here. So that's sort of how I'm, um, how I'm dumbing the ear down. I'll just go go to my regular sketch master brush now just because it's a little finer and you know we've got the basic shapes and the basic size the only thing I might do actually is, is make his his head a little thicker but so for the ear I'm just matching kind of that overall shape And it actually looks like his ears are more like this. Okay. 
and it actually looks like his, his head is a little more wider at the top. So once again, I'm just going to use Liquify. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to push out, push out his head. And Liquify is a great tool because, you know, you don't have to resketch everything. You can just sort of make uh, the adjustments how you need them. So that's pretty good. Let me fix his little nose here. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good, uh, oops. And procreate sometimes sometimes spazzes out on me. So this is a pretty good start uh, for the the basic shapes. And um, yeah, so I'll come back and I'll, I'll I'll sort of clean this up and work on some facial features, and then just sort of pin down this sketch a little bit more. Okay, so we finished up the sketch. So that was the difficult part, getting all of the anatomy and getting the general shape is the most difficult part because uh, you're kind of establishing your blueprint. So now that you have your blueprint, you can use it to to build upon and, and then create the artwork that you want to create. And this is one of the, the tough truths about character design and about making even cartoon characters is there's a lot of work that goes into the anatomy and getting things right. And the difference between working this out the way that I have and tracing the outlines is these relationships of space between the legs, of the, the size of the body and the head, um, the way that the toes are, things like that. Um, when you can work them out yourself, not work them out yourself, but when you can look at the artwork and then work them out, if I have to redraw him, I have a better understanding of why certain things are where they are and, and how wide the, the legs are apart and different anatomical things. Because I've had to work them out myself, then there's certain, there's certain perspectives that you can't help but to sort of hold on to, even if you don't think about it. Like the distance between the ears and his, his neckline here. Uh, the way that the horns are. I mean, you can always trace them, but when you work them out for yourself, it helps you problem solve and it helps your muscle memory because you're not just tracing the lines. You, you're having to figure out how can I get this right in relation to the rest of the body. Okay, so let's get to the fun part or the most expressive part, which is the face. So when you're doing the face, obviously you want to look at the, the reference, but this is where you want to really put your character design skills into it. Uh, and you just want to use this as a base, and you're going to use your own sketch your own sketch as a blueprint. So I'm going to make... I actually was working on this before, but I forgot to hit record on the uh, audio. That's what his... Well, I, I can't show you his face because it's not lined up, but... Yeah, I, I worked for about 15 minutes and then realized that I didn't hit record, so it's definitely recording now. I'm going to use Sketch Master, and let's get into the character design of this fella's face. Okay, so he has a really big nose, and even though I made a heart, uh, it kind of is, is fairly round here, so it doesn't really come to that much of a point. So you still have the general shape. So I'm going to make the top part of the general shape because we know that that's right. So really big nose, nostrils here, mouth line. This line is really important. So it's not in the middle, it's more towards the bottom. And this is where you get a lot of expression. So I'm bringing it down the way that it is here, but I'm also going to bring it up. I'm going to add this little bit at the end. So no matter what kind of mouth you're doing, that's always going to make it look like they're smiling. 
Because that's what we have at the end of our cheeks. Uh, we have, if we want to make it look like our, we're pulling our, our, our cheeks up. So I'll make this line nice and thick. Okay, and we'll make his mouth open. So I'm going to... I'm just going to keep it nice and round. Sort of looks like his bottom lip here, but I'll make the little, I'll make a line to represent his, his bottom lip. Okay, and then we'll, I'll give him two, I'll give him two teeth here. I'll give him two kind of square, chalky teeth. So he has these other two little round things here where his, where his nostrils are, so I'm just going to do those really light just so I can sort of, you know, get the spacing right. And he has almond-shaped nostrils that sort of point towards the, the center line here, so I'll just start out with some regular circles or ellipses. And I'll sort of just turn them into sort of an almond shape. And this one I'm just matching with the other one. So we have a circle. And we'll make a little almond shape. It's not bad. I'm just going to move this one up a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Just so they sort of match up with each other. And I'm actually noticing that his his nose, his nostrils, his nostrils, they're a little higher up, so I'm just going to make these a little higher up. There we go. Okay, so we have our little nose there, and now we'll we'll put some eyes on him or her. I'm going to make the eyes on a new layer too, in case I want to just get rid of them or, or uh, put them in a different, a different spot. So we have the center line here, and so he has a big space here. So we're going to use the center line in this space and sort of make the eyes outside of that. So we have a little bit of space there. And here I just want to do a circle. We'll do the same thing on this side. A little bit of space. I'll sketch my circle a little bit and then I'll just do a, a circle and hold so I get a so I get a nice perfect circle. I'll go edit shape and circle just to make sure that it's that it's perfect. And in case you didn't see what I what I did there, if you're drawing a circle, and let's say it's a not a perfect circle, you can hold and it will you know it will snap to a circle or an ellipse. Then you go to edit shape. And right now it's an ellipse, but if you wanted a circle, it will move it to a circle. So that's what I did there. So now we have our two eye shapes. I'll get rid of this little... I'll get rid of these sketch lines. Okay, so I'm actually just going to bring his, his eyes down a bit. Oh, well, that's okay. I can bring his nose line down, too. Okay, so I definitely want to add in uh, this, this big area above his eyes. So I'm just going to make... So I'm just going to sort of use the, the edge of his head shape... as that sort of mass like above his eye, that sort of big muscle 
slash eye socket area. Okay, so now another character design thing is I always make this this area above. I mean, this would be his eye here. I don't know. If, I don't know if they have eyelashes. They probably do have eyelashes, like like we do, to kind of anthropomorphize them. But you'll notice with a lot of Disney characters, they have really thick, uh, really thick lines here. Thank you. So I'm going to make this line really thick. Apparently I have a package in the hallway. Um, no, it looks, that one looks bad. Here we go. So I sort of bring it out, so I, when I make my eyes, when I make my eyes, I just sort of start here, and then I sort of just thicken it out there. So that's really what, that's really what I do. Sometimes I make this little, this little bit at the end, and then I usually draw this line here. As, as the eyelid. But you can add a lot of personality, you know, even just with this this shape, like this is a little concerned. Or you know, something like that. So you can add a lot of a lot of personality with just a line over the eyes. That's where you get a lot of the, the personality from. This is taking forever. Okay, so let's go back to our little face here. I'm also noticing that this eye is a little bit, looks like it's a little bit uh, smaller. So I'm going to take Liquify again. As I always say, I, I use Liquify a lot. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so now we have our little eyelid. So let's... Eh, I don't like that. I'm trying to figure out what expression I want him to have. We'll just we'll just do I'll just do a regular kind of eyelids up expression. And these lines are sort of similar to his his lines here. Except obviously he looks he looks angry there. If I wanted to do just like he is in the in the reference, I would just follow Come on, come on. Time for a new iPad. There we go. I would just follow this line here. You know, just sort of like... Like we were saying before, that's how I would get to sort of match that better. But we want to make him cute. Keep his eyes nice and round. And for the eyeballs, uh, I'll make a layer underneath, underneath the eyes. And you can actually use like a solid circle brush. For now, I'll just use a Sketch Master. But just go with a normal circle. Um, that might be a little big, but as you can see, they're not even. You want to make sure that the eyes are are nice and even. And also practice the 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 sizes because sometimes sometimes like I'll make eyes and they'll be really big, and sometimes that's not the best option.
So I spent a lot of time on, on eyes and eye placements and just figuring out what looks best. I like that. I think that looks pretty cute. All right, I'm gonna go back up to my eye layer and I'm just gonna finish off his, his face. Let's see if I can make this smaller. I guess I could have chose a better better um, sweatshirt to wear rather than this funny looking fleece thing but oh well too late now all right so uh, another thing that I always do is you really have to you really have to kind of leave this space underneath so what I do is I just you know, this is if this is his nose snout area, then I like to le I like to just make a little curve under there. That would be for the eye, because that leaves me space for the rest of this the rest of this cheek. So I'm gonna make his cheeks a little bit pudgier. And this I'm I'm not really looking at the at the reference because we pretty much have the the shape of the face. You know, this is all just a lot of the face now is just going to be the character design because you already have the bare bones. So, I'll make his chin nice and round. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna push out because his other cheek is nice and plump, so I just want to make sure that this is nice and plump as well. Oops. Okay, so let me just color in his little nose. as well. I'm just darkening that upper line, that line on the top, so. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, so, so far so good. So now that we did the face, uh, we'll take a little break and we'll, um, you know, we'll sort of clean up the body and do some, some sketch lines uh, for the body and sort of work that out so it's more cohesive to his new cute looking face. So what I normally do now is I take this the sketch layer for the body and I just make it really light. I'll keep it on 40% so you, so you can still see the, the sketch. And now I'll make a layer above that and I'll take, I'll use Sketch Master brush in here. So we have this this line kind of curving, kind of curving, uh, come on, I, I hate this iPad, there we go. So we have this line curving and then we have some little lines there, so I'm just going to sort of match, I'm going to match all that, but I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm just going to make the lines as I see them, so we have this, we have a few lines here. And then I'm just going to copy our our line. And I'll make these little Okay. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I don't really have to reference reference it that much because you know, since I drew it on the other side, 
you know, I kind of have the gist of, of what I'm doing. And I'm just following my, my sketch. So I'm following my sketch, uh, not perfectly, you know, I change things when I need to, but for the most part, all of the answers are, all the answers are there. These are just, these marks, I'm just sort of making it, I'm just simplifying everything that I'm seeing here. I'm just simplifying everything so I can, uh, so everything is fairly, um, what's the word? And I'm still using fairly, fairly big strokes. And every now and again, I'm still looking to see if there's anything particular that I need to make. Like, so I see that this kind of comes out a lot here. So I just want to make... You know, the horns are a major characteristic, so... I try to look for anything that's very specific about the horns and add those in. Even though they're even though they're higher than my my sketch, okay, and now we'll make this little. This line in the middle. That looks pretty good. So now all of these sketch lines, I'm just going to sort of... I'm just going to sort of simplify them all. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of lines here, a lot of lines in the neck, and they're they are quite difficult to see, but you don't have to match everything to the T. So I'm just sort of <coughs> excuse me. So now I'm just using my sketch. I'm just I'm just simplifying all the lines that I already made. So I'm just using all of this Usually I draw really really big, but I want to make sure I keep this in view. I'm even making I'm making his uh, his feet a little bit smaller as well, and I can oh, I actually didn't notice that his back leg is back there as well. So that's that's good because you don't want it to look like he's on three legs. So, but we'll add that in afterwards. So I'm just kind of matching everything as I'm going. Simplifying my sketch. And little little things like this, I'm just kind of pronouncing. I'll just make one down there.
and that's why it's it's really important to have a good a good sketch uh, because once you get here it allows you to just be able to sort of have fun with it and just sort of pull out all the lines that that you need little butt area okay and I can actually make this smaller this hoof is a little it's a little big it shouldn't be that that much bigger than the there we go that's that's better and a lot of times for my work I actually like to leave the really light sketch behind. I mean, that's that's just... There's something about a sketch that I just find beautiful. So I usually just... I'll just leave it there. And then I'll make... I'll make another layer. So I'll make it below this... the lines that we just made. I'll label this one... lines. I'll label this one... sketch. And I use a lot of layers, so it's really good to to just label them, uh, so you know what you're what you're doing. I can actually put these layers together, and I'll label that face, and I'll put the eyes. Whoops! And I'll put the eye layer beneath. I always put the eye layer beneath the, the face layer. This is one of the other noses I did for when I was practicing, which I really like. I, I almost like it even better than this. And the reason I like it better it's smiling, it smiles a little higher, and I just like how round that part of his nose is. So let me see if I can just I may be able to get away with just widening his mouth a little bit. Then I'll just use my, my brush and just kind of clean that up. Yeah, that looks better. His mouth was a little too, a little too small before. And I'm going to use smudge to just sort of just make his teeth a little smaller or a little shorter and a little like chunkier, chunkier. So now I'm going to go back to that layer, uh, the, the empty layer that's beneath the lines. And he's pretty dark, so the first thing I'm going to do is just take, uh, let's see, if I use my, my faves brush, I'm going to use Shadow 30. And what that is is just a brush on 30% opacity. So you can either use that or you can just make a new layer and make the layer... 30% opacity. That's actually that's probably a better idea. Um, when I get a new iPad, I might be able to to do this to just make the brush 30%. But since I have an old iPad, I can draw something, and sometimes the screen will skip. So if it skips, then it'll do that, and that's not what I want. I want it to be a uniform 30%. So what I have to do is just make the layer 30% and then just choose a brush at 100%. And then you can color your you can color it in this way. And then you can make some values darker, some values lighter. 
things like that. Um, so this is one way to do it. There's also another sketchy way, more sketchy way that, that I usually color things. Which is a little more fun. I guess I'll do it that way now. I know, sometimes I like send you guys on wild goose chases. So I'm just using uh, Sketchmaster 2. And I'm just going to use a regular layer. So I'm going to put this one back up to 100%. Uh, and this is how I do all my, this is how I usually color everything in. So Sketchmaster, it's a pressure sensitive brush. So I try to maintain uh, the same pressure as I do one pass over the whole body, just because he's pretty dark. The ears are a little bit darker than the, the inside of the ears. The top part and the part inside is actually darker than that. So I'm going to go over that a couple times. And I really like this brush because it just allows me, as I would with a regular pencil, I can just keep going over things in order to get them lighter or darker. And that's the whole reason why I like Procreate is because you can you can use brushes and tools that are very close to what you would use traditionally. And I have a I have obviously years of traditional art background, so that's always going to be more comfortable for me. So this, so underneath his, uh, underneath his horns is obviously really dark. So I'm going to go over that quite a few times, just until it reads as dark. And now, now that I have this sort of base color, I'm just going to look for these values, like this area, which is all much darker under here. The inside of the legs. This area is all much darker. The legs are just dark in general. But you just want to get those areas that are that have shadows. Okay, so, and he also has, two light marks here. So I want to make those two little light marks. And he sort of has a light mark around his eyes too. Then he has a nice kind of, sort of like a brindle pattern almost. So the first thing, my first trick that I like to do is I like to take that layer and then duplicate it. 
that will always or most likely make it a lot more rich. And then you can adjust the top one to how light or, or how dark you like it. Okay. And if you want, you can take you can take your eraser uh, with an, an airbrush, and you can sort of erase away certain colors. See, eraser doesn't uh, the airbrush doesn't really work. If I want to put these in, I think I just have to do them manually. So I'm going to go with uh, Sketchmaster Two again, but eraser. So I'm in Sketchmaster Two again for the eraser. So let's see how this erases. Okay. So the same way we did all this line work, you can put these little, all these little nooks and crannies and scars and things like that. You can add that in as texture. There's a lot on his knees. I'm just adding a little, just adding these in as a little bit of uh, of texture because he does have a lot of these markings. And I can't tell if they're the color of his fur or if they're all like markings and battle scars. But regardless of the fact that they're they are there, so you can always add uh, details like that in. I might not. I might. I might keep them out. Sometimes I can't make up my mind, but the best thing to do is try something out and see and see if you like it, see if it works. Okay. You merge those again. I always uh, I always hit back and then I go I always go too far. Okay, so last but not least, just add a little bit more shadow in certain areas. I'll color his nose a little bit because his nose is not not as dark as his skin, but I'll color his ears a tiny bit, and then just darken up some of these shadows. Now for his back leg, which I almost forgot, um, I'm just gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that simple. So so I'll just make a little. So I'm just sort of mimicking the shape just back there, and I'm going to make that really dark. Uh, because I want, to sh I want to show it more in my drawing, because in the picture you believe it. You don't think that he has three legs, but if I'm drawing it, there are, you know, it, it might read that he just has three legs. And it's just the, it's just the nature of it. And you'll inevitably get comments like, oh, you forgot his other leg, or, you know, things like that. Even though clearly it's just, clearly his leg is behind. Okay. So far, so good. And the only other thing I wanted to try out is uh, maybe make, make, making his eyes not so... Uh, I'm going to select his face. So I'm, I'm going to select 
the face, the lines, and the shadow. So I have all those selected, and I'm going to do liquefy. And I'm just going to move the bottom part of his eyes up a little bit and see what that looks like. So now I'm going to get out of the liquefy and I'm going to see which one I like better by just hitting back and forward. And I think that this looks a lot better, but I need to adjust one of his eyes so it's not touching. Okay, I think that looks great. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the shadow layer and just add some shadows for his uh, his upper eyelid. And then I'm going to lightly color in the eye. Really light. And I'm going to try to add some, some highlights like I usually do. So I'm going to go to the eye. And instead of using white, sometimes I, I use white on top. I'm going to try it first with using the eraser. And then I'll just use um, a regular brush. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the brush down to 30% the eraser brush. So now I'm on eraser, I'm using butter blade, and I'm going to bring it down to 30%. Now I'm going to bring it up to 100%. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And what's really important that I have to fix is when I when I make these eraser marks, I have to make sure that they're the same angle. And it's really important because if they're not, it'll make the eyes look wonky, even if the eyes aren't wonky. So let me adjust this eye a little bit. Okay, that little bit I think helped. Okay, so the only other thing that I was wanted to play around with again, I'm going to choose the I'm going to choose the sketch, the shadow layer, the lines, and the face again. I'm going to go back to liquify, and I just want to see if I want to make his nose a little bit bigger. Let me get out of it. And let me see. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one I like more. I think I like this one best. I think I like this best. But maybe I just want to push... Push that up a little bit. Let me see how that looks. So I'm just kind of ex accentuating, you know, this... The smile, the nose, all these little details really make a big impact. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. I think I like that bigger nose. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And I, I, I can see this plane on his nose. So I just want to give his nose a little shape. So I am going to... Just sort of color in the bottom here. And what this does is it just gives his nose some shape. And sometimes you just have to kind of Keep going over it until it actually looks 
till it looks okay. Let's see. So his, his nose is really, you can kind of see that line down the middle. Okay, so that looks better. I'm just gonna make it really light. So it's there, but sometimes if you make things dark, they just, they don't look, they might not look good, so. Regardless of something's there, if it doesn't look good, if it doesn't work, you know, don't add it. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I hope that, uh, hope that was interesting. I hope you got some, some good use out of it. Uh, it takes a lot of work. I'm, I'm going to do some more simple animals. Uh, I, I do like to do, I've never done a water buffalo, so this is my first time doing a, a shape like this, but uh, th there is a lot of practice that goes into it, but sketching and figuring out these shapes, it's difficult. It's very, very, very difficult, but it's worth it because eventually any animal, any shape, you'll start seeing things in shapes and that'll just make it easier. And then you can, you know, you can work on the eyes and you can work on the nose. That's a whole nother thing, but keep practicing from reference. The re all the answers are here. So just try to simple, simplify everything, um, go through things slowly, spend time on things. The one key for drawing and, and sketching and making things look good is just it's taking the time, spending time to learn, and messing up so that you can eventually fix your mistakes and get better. So that's, uh, that's, that's the most important part, is you're not going to get it right away. Uh, you, you have to really work at it and spend a lot of time uh, doing these things. But if you, if you spend the time, and if you really want to get better, then you, you you will eventually because you'll just learn, you know, different different tips and tricks and why things uh, look good and why why certain things don't. So just keep just keep going and practice. And I hope this was useful. And please take all of uh, all, everything that you learned from here. Um, you know, use it. Practice. Uh, practice with my tips. That that's how I've gotten to where. I can do what I'm doing. I forgot to make the toes, the uh, hooves a little lighter. So I'm just using eraser with the same, the same, uh, the same brush, Sketchmaster Two. I'm just erasing out the little areas for his, for his hooves, hoobies. I'm just gonna, I just like to kind of ground him a little bit, so I'll just add a little bit of just add a little bit of something underneath. All right, hope that was uh. Hope that was useful, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, as always, keep drawing, and I'll catch you in the next one.